Now let's actually make your game work. Let's use events to make things happen when other things happen. Let's make a variable for the red part. Logo red part equals game dot workspace dot red part. Now if you take a look in the object browser, you'll see that parts have a certain event. Remember I told you guys not to worry about the lightning bolt symbols? These are all events. Let's take a look at them. This event right here is called touched, and this event goes off whenever a part touches another part. And we know that players are just made out of parts, so we can actually detect when players touch parts. This is how kill bricks actually work. So what I'm going to be doing is red part dot touched. After that, you need to connect a function so a function is remember a piece of code that can run whenever you call it in i'm going to connect a function to this event so the code in the function runs when the event goes off you guys should be able to understand this code by now it's a simple function and then we're putting that function inside connect so what happens is when the part is touched by another part this function will run and if you click on this you'll actually be able to see that there is a parameter this parameter is called the other part so not the red part but the part that touches the red part we can actually take that in as a parameter it's called other part usually it's just called hit though so remember the name property is actually a string so so we can print hit.name. It's going to tell us the name of the part that touches the red part. If this does not make sense, remember that red part.touch is an event and we're connecting a function to that event. So the code inside the function will run when this event goes off. So this function right here, this is the function we're connecting right here. And there's one parameter that this event actually gives us. So when the event goes off, it records the part that touched the red part. And then it passes that off as a parameter. And we're able to pick that up here. If you're unsure about what parameters you can get from an event, just go ahead and click on the function and you'll be able to see the parameters right here. For example, the only parameter for dot touched is other part and we usually call the other part hit so i've just named it hit here let's hop into the game and hopefully that'll clear up some confusion the first thing we see is touched and base plate and that's because the part touched the base plate i'm gonna walk on the part and before that let me show you guys inside my player i have all these different parts and these all have their different names and you'll see these names right here as you can see when i touch it you can see all of these names of different body parts on my player touching the part one thing that all these body parts have in common is their parent which is my character this is important to know for the next thing i'm going to show you guys so before I show you guys why that's important, let's actually move this function in here. This is really simple, just go ahead and copy the function, paste it in, and you're done. One thing to note is that this is an anonymous function, that means there will be no name, and I can't just call it in later. This function will run whenever this event goes off. So make sure you delete the name right here. You'll be left with the space right here, you can get rid of that. This does look a lot more simple, and if you haven't understood already, this parameter right here is getting passed in here. This means the other part, the part that touched the red part, is called hit. And inside the function, I can access that part at any time. As you can see, the parts that were touching the red part are printed here because of this statement right here, where we're looking at the part that touched the red part and printing the name property. But say I wanted to figure out what player actually touched the red part. Remember, the parts that are touching the red part are body parts, and one thing they all have in common is the player that they are parented to. So what I can do is local player character equals hit dot parent. Because remember, we always have a player in here, and we have a character in the workspace. The player usually holds things like your backpack, player scripts, and leader stats, while the character holds your tools and clothes on it. That's because we can actually see those things in the workspace. So now that we have our player character, I'm going to print the player's name just for proof of concept. Player character dot name. Now there's no check here to check if it's actually a player touching the part. So it's just going to print the parent of anything that touches the part. For example, you can see workspace right here. That's because the base plate is under the workspace. If I touch this part right now, it's going to print my username. And that's because all my body parts are touching the part. That means all the body parts go through here. And then we're getting the body parts parent. So all these body parts are parented to this. And then we're printing that parent's name. Now in the player service is actually a function that can tell us if a model is a player. The character model in the workspace when I'm walking around is actually just a model. It's named my username, just like that. So let's get a variable for the player service, local players equals game colon get service players. And now let's call in the function. I'm going to make a variable for the player. If so, if you remember returning, what this function essentially does is it returns the player and it doesn't return the player in the workspace. That's the player's character. It returns the player right here. This helps us access things like the leader stats, backpack, and player scripts. But remember, this function will return nil if the player character isn't actually a player's character. For example, we saw the workspace, and since the workspace does not correspond to a player in players, it's just going to return nil. Just to prove this concept, let's print player name and try it again. As you can see, when the base plate touches the part, it gets the parent of the base plate, and then it runs that through get player from character. And since the workspace isn't a character of any player, it's just going to return nil, and since we told it to print whatever it returns, it's printing nil. Now if I were to step on this red part, it's going to print my username, and that's because when I step on it, my body parts become the hits, and then we get the hits parent, which is me, and then we run the parent through this function, and it returns the player. And the player that it's returning is my player inside the player's service right here. That's actually pretty much all there is to events. You can look through the object browser and find all these different types of events. Some events are standard and they're on everything, like ancestry change, change, ascend and added. And other ones are unique. For example, activated fires whenever you click the left mouse button with a tool. When I say fires, I mean running the code that the event is connected to. For example, the touched event is connected to this code here. 